Welcome to the Maritime Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Wioli. In each episode, we bring you exclusive interviews with maritime professionals, industry experts, and students. Our guests come from different backgrounds, including shipping, yachting, offshore, supply chain, and more. Our goal is to give you all the knowledge you need to succeed in the maritime industry. Hello everyone, welcome back to a new podcast episode. And today we are with Gonzague Archambault and we are going to talk about shipping finance. So Gonzague, I want to ask you the first question. Can you introduce yourself, please? For sure, Paul Louis. So my name is Gonzague Archambault. I'm French. Uh, I'm in the shipping industry since uh, more than 20 years now. I spend uh, most of the time at uh, ship owner Louis Dreyfus Armateur in Paris. And since... Uh, Two years, a bit more than two years, uh, I switched to uh, the other side um, of the ship owning. I'm an uh, advisor in financing, ship financing, uh, together with a European group, uh, which is an advisory boutique dedicated to shipping. And I opened the uh, Swiss uh, office uh, for uh, European two years ago now. Thank you, uh, Gonzague. So today, uh, as you know, it's, it will be quite an introduction of shipping finance for people who listen to this podcast. Uh, on, I want to ask you this first question. Can you introduce maybe what is shipping finance? Because it's a quite a wide term, but I think we have different uh, field in shipping finance. Uh, yeah, indeed. So uh, shipping finance or maybe shipping already is a very specific business, uh, which uh, can be uh, uh, very different from uh, all, all, the, all, what, uh, all what we know. Um, so that's why we have very dedicated people within the shipping finance. You have general space, which, which are more corporate finance, which are more close to any other uh, finance uh, uh, business. However, in the shipping industry, the, the, the main difference is the asset financing. So when you when it comes to uh, um, finance, uh, the acquisition of a vessel, it makes a big difference because you have very dedicated specialists uh, on the lending side, on the legal side, and on, uh, on the, on the advisory, advisory side. So okay. this is what we will talk about uh, today, and um, and uh, it's uh, not it's fully transparent for sure, but it's not very common. So uh, that's why it's very useful to talk about that today. Yeah, sure. So of course we're going to talk more about the ship owning side because you are quite expensive with, uh, in this side. But do we have like uh, different actors in shipping finance? Of course the ship owners because they need to invest in for their fleet. Uh, but what else do we have? So. Uh, that's a very good question because we are not so many uh, around this uh, around this uh, this business. So you have for sure the ship owner who will acquire the vessel and operate the vessels. So this is one very interesting and very exciting side of, of, of this business. On the other side, you have the lending side, which can be multiple. You can have uh, debt, uh, investment, and sub lending and capital providings on this uh, on this side. And then you have the advisory uh, world with legal advisor, financing investor, investment uh, uh, advisor. Um, so yeah, you have uh, six uh, around the six type of actors around the ship financing. Okay, quite interesting. So maybe we can start by talking about the investment uh, uh, space. Uh, so uh, last time when we talked, you t told me something about the public uh, bank on the private bank, and I think the trends now this is like uh, it's becoming more private like to inv like uh, the actors who invest in, in this fleet is can you explain and elaborate about it please yes so uh, as you can imagine shipping is a very old business uh, since uh, the centuries and centuries and um, mainly a private uh, business uh, as the ship owners was mainly uh, owned by families which is still the case today. When you look, when you look at the, the biggest uh, ship owner in the world, it's MSC, it's fully family owned. So it's a very private um, business. And they had along the centuries, very close relation to their banks, I would say. Um, so it, it makes, uh, uh, it made some, uh, some banks coming in this, uh, in this industry and being dedicated to this, uh, to this field, to this um, uh, space. So you had what we called shipping banks um, around the world. There were not so many, but they had a really uh, dedicated teams uh, uh, on this business. And it is very important for ship owners to rely and to work with uh, dedicated shipping teams, which understand perfectly the business. So indeed, we talk about that, that you had, if, if you take in Europe, for instance, very few banks, maybe 
10 to 15 very uh, shipping banks. French banks were very active in this, uh, in this space. Um, and uh, over the, the, the last decades, you had a movement, a general movement, where these banks had more and more constraints that make them more um, uh, cherry picking, I would say, on the every uh, uh, every uh, project. So some of these banks have even exit totally the, the the shipping market and let the door open to alternative lenders, and that we come uh, to see more and more over the 20, 15 to twenty years. So we'll talk about that a bit later. But you have. Uh, first, the, the Chinese lessors who came in this market in Europe, they were very aggressive. And then you have private debt uh, investors, equity investors. And there is a, a general movement around this due to the fact that traditional shipping banks has regulatory uh, problems, mm. uh, Basel IV regulation, uh, uh, ESG regulation, and they are less and less uh, in a position to be uh, present in this kind of financing. So in that in that world, uh, sh- some of the ship owners are a bit lost uh, in this uh, in this new uh, situation, and they need some advisory uh, uh, from uh, external uh, dedicated uh, people, as we are uh, with Eurofin, and uh, we help them to uh, to uh, to orient them in this um, in this new market. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, you mentioned like uh, we have the private debt investor, the equity investor, and the third one was. So you have uh, in every uh, sectors you have sub sectors for private debt and private equity. Um, so if you look at uh, the, the private debt, is quite uh, a new market uh, where you have actors lending money and not investing money. They are lending to to the, mm. the ship owners. Uh, so they expect a reimbursement with an yeah. interest rate. And they, on the other side, when it comes to equity, they invest. So they take a share either of the ship or of the corporate. Okay. And then they take more risk um, as uh, they don't have any uh, return. However, within the equity uh, space, you have different level of uh, investments. You have the common equity, like every shareholder, they put money on the table and the table is at risk, and then they, they expect a good return. Or you have more um, uh, equity, which is uh, structured equity, where you can ensure a minimum level of uh, return for the investors, but on the other side, they will not have the full return uh, that they will be capped. So as you can imagine, uh, the, the financiers are very clever and very uh, specific on each uh, contract, and they have found very different many manners to uh, to invest so um, yeah they have a quite a wide range of uh, investment uh, policy okay quite interesting uh, i can notice that uh, especially in this time like private debt is becoming very famous i mean not only in shipping and in many industries uh, many investors are coming up i think it's because maybe it's like uh, uh, how can i say it's becoming more public i mean everyone can invest uh, kind of or it's like uh, so you have to, you have to elevate uh, on the ship owning side. Yes, indeed, the private debt is quite uh, uh, popular because, as I told you earlier, uh, the, the, the the ship owning uh, business is quite um, traditional, family owned. So it, they are they had more historical difficulties to see new investors uh, coming in the capital, in the family capital. I would say so. Private debt is a good tool because it's more flexible that. Uh, Bank uh, bank debt bank debts, uh, so yes, this is a, this is quite um, uh, quite interesting for them. On on the on, on the other side, I think I forgot your question on the equity. I just wanted to uh, to ask you more more about equity. What is it on why uh, it's less popular than private debt? Yeah, it's less popular because it's uh, the, the constraints is uh, higher. It's more expensive because the the, the investors uh, uh, have less security. Mm. Um, and, uh, and and for sure, when uh, when you invest equity, you are the board. You, you can uh, ask questions, oriented the politic of the of the ship owners, and so on. So it's more invasive, I would say, uh, when it, when it comes to equity. Okay, and and I think as well we have more in the startup space the venture capital. Is it like can we introduce it to this uh, term? So it's, it's funny you ask about venture capital because this is something that it is 
quite missing in the in the shipping industry, mm. uh, especially when we when you look in in France, there is a huge move on the greener uh, operators yeah. willing to in, uh, invest in sailing boats and so on. So there are a lot of startups uh, successful for 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 some of them, and uh, and they had to uh, to raise a lot of cash uh, upfront on the business which was not existing at that time. So um, th there were a lot of demand for venture capital, uh, startup capital, um, and advisors li li like us were not in a good uh, in a good position because there were very few actors. Uh, willing to put money on something which doesn't exist at that time. So some of them um, uh, have partnered up with a long-term uh, ship owner with a successful outcome, uh, such as uh, Zephyr Eboy with uh, the Ariane uh, space rocket uh, uh, business. They have built uh, the first vessel to, uh, to carry these yeah. uh, components to uh, Guyana, to French Guyana. Uh, you have also a big tender uh, still with the Freiburg uh, for a AUTF. Uh, they, they are about to order more than 10 vessels, sailing vessels again. And you have smaller um, uh, players such as TOWT, uh, mm -hmm. Grand Sail, and so on. And all these um, uh, these uh, corporate had to uh, go on the on the market to to find some uh, uh, startup funds, venture capital. And we see more family offices. So more private, even more private, uh, quite interested by this kind of uh, investment. Quite interesting, yeah. Uh, so I can say that the shipping industry is quite traditional, uh, and uh, but that's quite interesting because I think it's moving a little bit. Yes, uh, uh, indeed. Uh, I, I would say it's currently moving. Uh, I like to say that uh, we see now uh, uh, new uh, new ship owners which are much less uh, family owned business that it used to be and more financial it is not mm. a bad word in my mouth to see that uh, there are financiers coming in shipping and building a fleet so i call them the the the, the, the financing ship owners um, where they have a real uh, 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 strategy within the shipping, they built a fleet and then they give the fleet to operators. So they, so they allow operators to have access to very high level of fleets. Uh, but as they are building their own fleet over, over a strategy, even though they are not the one who operates the vessel, we can consider these guys are ship owners because factually they own vessels okay. and uh, and they built uh, uh, an equity story around this uh, this uh, uh, this business and they are willing to develop on a strategy and becoming ship owners so okay. this is very different from traditional ship owners that we all know uh, family owned uh, ship owning uh, we can talk about uh, Yeah. CMA, CGM, uh, MSC in France, Louis Dreyfus, and all these uh, uh, these family-owned business. Uh, and beside this uh, this uh, historical operators, you have new financiers, ship owners, uh, operators, and that, that's quite interesting and quite efficient. Yeah, quite interesting. And uh, I imagine some companies can can make like some. The, I mean, private uh, investors like create a fund and uh, invest together in one big project? Is it something quite popular in the industry or not yet? So you have two levels of uh, investment. You, you can either invest in the corporate, so in the company who owns the, uh, which owns the, uh, the assets, or you can invest directly in the, in the assets. Okay. You had in, in Europe uh, a bad period, I would say, where you had some uh, personal investors Uh, investing in directly in assets. It was in Germany, the KG. It has been a disaster for several reasons. It didn't last uh, for a long time and it didn't have any other um, uh, project uh, like, like these ones. But nothing prevents to have indeed private investors, uh, indiv individual investors willing to invest in a fund dedicated to shipping. Um, when we talk about this alternative uh, investors, And they, as it was the case, and it's still the case with the banks, all these new investors must hire dedicated shipping teams around the shipping and, mm. uh, and, and drag and, uh, and raise some, uh, some, uh, some capital from, uh, from individu individuals. I don't have in mind uh, a, a 
specific individuals, a group of investors willing to invest in, uh, in shipping. Maybe it's under the radar, but for time being on the market, you have big asset managers. Um, they are partner, they are a, a, a subsidiary of a huge uh, US uh, uh, managers, equity or debt managers, for sure. But on the low individuals, small individuals, I don't have any example in mind. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, for investors who want to uh, to invest, of course, in a in specific project in the shipping industry, uh, what is the process? I mean, to identify this is a good opportunity. I think we call that the due diligence. Due diligence, uh, yeah, that's part of the of the process. Um, so maybe the, the the easiest would be to take a, to to take an example. Um, yes. So uh, either on the ship owning side or the investment side, the, the the key element is advisors as as we are because we are here to make them uh, uh, fit and find the good investors for the good ship owners and vice versa, because they all have uh, very uh, specific uh, uh, expectations uh, as a, a borrower or as an investor or lenders. So um, in our business, we have a huge panel of uh, lenders or investors on one side. On the other side, a huge panel of ship owners and, uh, and uh, capital needs. So our job is clearly to uh, perfectly understand the needs of the ship owner, for instance, and find the good lenders, advise, uh, lenders or investors in front of them. So... As I told you, uh, everyone has its own expectations. Either is the amount to be raised, they want the maximum leverage, and we know who will be able to deliver such uh, such financing, or it's the cost, or it's the security uh, level. Uh, so you have, or even more geographical, uh, some of them want to remain in uh, in Europe, or some of the other ones have no issue to go uh, Eastern uh, in, in Asia, for example. So or you can go even uh, before this uh, stage to advise what kind of financing the ship owner will need and to orientate them either on equity, debt, bank loans, or, or, mm. or maybe uh, lessors uh, through uh, leases. So, yeah, we, we, can, we, we, we can assist from the very early stage the only issue is that it has to be quick, um, so we cannot be there as from the very beginning of the project from a ship owners, for instance. It's not our job. Our job is to take a project which already exists and find a good solution to finance the, uh, the project. Okay. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, I just want to clarify a question with you because it was uh, in my list of questions, but I think we answer to this question. When I ask you the difference between debt financing and equity financing, so debt financing, the company is like uh, giving uh, the, the, so the money, but they, they are waiting in exchange to have some, uh, of course, to have this money back. On equity financing, it's like taking sh uh, some share of the company. Uh, exactly, all, all the assets. So you have uh, so the 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 debt financing is uh, exactly the same uh, as uh, in the real estate. Hmm. So you want to buy an asset, you have some cash on your bank account, but not enough. So you need an external in, uh, uh, lenders who lend you the money and expect the reimbursement of this money with an interest and then you have the amount you have the duration and you have the interest rate and also the security so this is pure lending um, and, uh, and and not at all uh, investing and on the other side uh, if you don't have enough cash on your bank account and you need someone to invest with you in your project because uh, on your own, you are not able to put all the alongside the the, the, the debt. Um, then you have the need of an external investor who will put equity along with you, and then together you go to see a lender uh, for for this. Okay, so let's uh, let's switch on on uh, the ship owner perspective. So, what is the? Can you explain step by step? Uh, the process. Imagine I am a, I am a ship owner and I want to invest in a on a new type of vessels, what I need to do on what is the fuel process? Well, um, in the shipping industry, you have many, many uh, different uh, uh, sub uh, business. 
as you can imagine, uh, the dry bulk is very different uh, from the from the container, uh, from the offshore, uh, from uh, anyone else, any, anything else. So usually, ship owners are dedicated to one, two, three, or four different business that they have experience uh, with. So um, uh, either they play the market, what we call the play the market, which means that you have a very identified market, such as the container, the dry bulk, the tanker, um, and they want to invest in one of these sectors. So they will add some capacity to this sector by acquiring um, one or 10 or 20 vessels. Um, so uh, this is what we call to play the market, uh, invest on speculative uh, side. So they will acquire a vessel without having the insurance that they will have a contract. So they will be on spot. Uh, they will put the vessel on the water and then they will try to market. Or you have in other sectors um, a, a contract, an underlying contract with a, a charterer who commit to charter the vessels for five uh, for one year or for uh, 20 years. Um, we can tell an example that, uh, that I know pretty well, which is uh, Airbus. Um, so Louis Dreyfus Armateur, who, uh, who has uh, vessels for Airbus since more than 20 years, they have participated to the last tender of Airbus and Airbus was requiring vessels for their own logistics within in Europe on, on the Atlantic for 15 years. So in that case, uh, all the tenderers went to first a yard to design the, the proper vessel for, for, for the needs, and then went to the financiers, the, the, either the, the banks or the investors yeah. or the, the private lenders, uh, with a project with an underlying charter. So the, 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 the lender has a huge security as he knows that the vessel will run for 15 years for Airbus, let's say. It can be the same with some uh, LNG players or uh, mining industry and so on. So this is very different from coming to uh, lenders with a vessel that you will put on the market and you don't know exactly where it will run, where she will run, uh, for whom it will run, in which uh, part of the world it will run. So that's the, the first step, I would say, mm. uh, that the first analysis is either the vessel will be on spec or it will be uh, uh, on a dedicated, dedicated contract. So when you are there, um, the structure of the financing may be different. The cost of the financing will be very different for sure. And uh, you have to go to lenders or investors which are comfortable with the assets. Um, if, you, uh, if you build very specific vessels for a dedicated contract and the contract work goes wrong, then you will have a vessel which will be designed exactly for this contract, free on the market, and no one knows what mm. to do with these uh, with these assets. So that's very important to have a, a, a good uh, appreciation of the liquidity of the vessel. What we'll do? What we will do of the vessel if the contract goes down? If the vessel is available on the market, what we can do with that? So it's not the same of financing let's say, a dry bulk uh, vessels, uh, brand new uh, with uh, some uh, green features on board, or to uh, finance a vessel which will be exactly designed for the very dedicated contract in this part of the world. So this is very, very different. When you mentioned that depends the type of vessels, uh, do we have some, um, what can I say, uh, characteristic, uh, for example, with the container market, with the dry bulk market or liquid market? So. Uh, as of today, uh, the, 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 if you look at the container market, the main difference uh, is the size of the vessel, for sure. It yeah. comes from very small uh, uh, vessels, uh, which can be 100 uh, boxes, up to 23, 24,000 vessels. So for sure, this vessel will not run the same lines. But the difference that you can have on, the, on this vessel is either a player, especially these times when you have huge uh, 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 uncertainty about how the future of the propulsion will be, either conventional, LNG, methanol, ammonia, and so on. So you can have a ship owner who will take a, a, a bet about a, a new technology and who will decide to uh, 
uh, order a vessel about uh, the ammonia, for, for instance, and the lenders will want to take uh, some certainty about the viability of this kind of propulsion because the asset itself is the, the, the part of the security for the lenders. We haven't talked about the mortgage of the vessel. The mortgage of the vessel is the biggest security for the lender, which means that through the mortgage, if something goes wrong with the borrower, with the ship owner, then the lender will have the ability to take the vessel through the mortgage. And after that, the bank, let's say the bank, will have on his own book, it will be owning the vessel. So the, the lender wants to ensure that he's comfortable with the assets in 5, 10 to 15 years. So this is very important about the specificity of the uh, of the assets and the lenders will be much more comfortable with the conventional uh, assets for which he has a lot of visibility, much more than uh, a, a unique assets either uh, about the propulsion, about the size, about the equipment or about any anything else. So uh, that's why the, 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 the lenders has to uh, get the, the, the good teams and the good uh, insurance uh, about the, the quality of the, of the vessel. Okay. So I imagine when do you uh, invest on a fleet of vessels and you, you are investing with a private debt, uh, for example, you have some uh, costs you need to take into account. So the interest, of course, interest rate. Yeah, uh, if we if we go on the on the cost of uh, of, of a financing, uh, there are uh, well maybe this is something that we had a discussion on is the all the related costs to the acquisition and the financing of a vessel. Yeah. If you take all these costs, the first one for sure is the acquisition cost of the of the vessel. So let's say for a new building, you will have the shipbuilding price, which is the price that the shipyard will charge you over. The, the, the duration of the shipbuilding, uh, depending on the contract, you can have a deposit as from the beginning, uh, then after at each milestones uh, during the construction of the vessels. And then the day of the delivery, they will charge you the remaining part of the shipbuilding or the yard price. So uh, this is the first one. The second one will be all the additional equipments that you can have on board. Uh, the spare parts, the equipments, the, the oil, the first bunkering, uh, all the equipments uh, for the crew uh, and so on. And uh, on top of that, you have the supervision cost. Mm -hmm. Since a uh, few decades, uh, there is a shift from, for, ship, from, uh, for shipbuilding from uh, Japan, Korea, and uh, other uh, parts of the world to China. China is now the, uh, the, the biggest uh, uh, shipbuilder in the world. And to ensure that the quality was uh, at the, uh, is at the, at the highest level, the ship owners send some supervisory team on site to follow the construction of the assets uh, at the yard. So this has a huge cost for the ship owner but at least they can ensure that the quality is at uh, their requirement level. So this is the supervisory cost. As from now, now you have the vessel, which is ready for sea, ready to go, ready to operate, shipbuilding price, environmental cost, and supervision cost. Then after, either you pay cash, good for you, or you need, uh, or you need a, a financing. In that case, for the cost will be some uh, upfront cost, upfront fee, interest uh, fee and agency fee over the life of mm. the of the vessel the, the the bank will charge you some fees to run uh, the, the 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 contract mm. to set up the financial documentation you will have some legal cost um, the ship owner can have its his own lawyer and will pay for the lawyer of the lender so you have two law firm on the same documentation uh, on the same documentation uh, and then if you had a need on that, you have for sure the advisory cost, which is related to the amount raised uh, by, uh, by the ship owner. So it makes a, a lot of costs around the acquisition of the vessel. 
uh, from the ship from the shipyard um, cost to the advisory cost uh, for for the financials. You don't have any uh, any tax around the acquisition of the vessel. Uh, then after it depends of the incorporation uh, location of the of the ship owner. Um, and as you may know, the every uh, or each uh, uh, each country has its own uh, specific tax. So when it comes to Greece, when it comes to uh, France, with the French tonnage tax regime, yeah. uh, and uh, and uh, and for sure you have all the. Uh, 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 location which are very attractive for ship owners that we all know okay quite uh, clear very clear uh, explanation uh, on you as you know a ship is not like a real estate i mean the value over time is uh, we have a big depreciation how can you uh, what can you say about depreciation of a vessel because yeah of course it's something you need to take into account for sure so you have two type of depreciation you have the the accounting value in the book of the of the ship owner so this is usually related to the lifetime of the vessel so a ship owner can decide that uh, its container vessel for instance has a lifetime of 25 years and then after 25 years he will either resell the vessel or scrap the vessel so in his book during the the, the operation of the vessel he will um he will depreciate the asset at, uh, from the book value of the asset over 25 years minus the, the, the scrap value of the vessel because at the very end of uh, the lifetime of the vessel you can scrap um, the vessel and take a, a, a small uh, amount of cash uh, on this so you are allowed to uh, depreciate the difference between the net book value and the scrap and on the other side so it can be uh, 25 years, which is quite common. The more common would be 20 years, I would say. We yeah. consider that a, a merchant or a cable layer or any other vessel, they don't have the, the same uh, life duration. So 20 to 25 years. And then on the other side, more on the cash side, I would say, it's uh, the, 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 the depreciation of uh, the, the, the financing. So the, the, the sooner you reimburse the, the loan uh, the sooner you generate more cash to remunerate your equity. So there is no specific uh, uh, rules uh, to uh, for the amortization, but the ship owner will be uh, happy to uh, to uh, to amortize and to depreciate to amortize the uh, the, the loan uh, as quick uh, as possible, sure. uh, depending on the cash flow generated by the vessels. Okay. So to scrap the vessel, this is a decision we take like uh, when we buy the vessel or this is a decision you take after uh, the life cycle of the vessel? Uh, when, when you acquire a vessel, it's very difficult to know exactly what will be the operation for her. Um, so it's more a decision uh, about the uh, uh, situation, I would say, uh, when you have a vessel uh, which is uh, 20, 20, 20 years old and the market is not good, the, the, the perspective are not good, then you can decide to scrap the vessel and take advantage of the, the, the steel value after uh, scrapping. As you know, the regulation is higher and higher and it's more mm -hmm. difficult to, uh, to, to scrap a vessel today. Uh, usually, uh, a first-class ship owner, as, as we say, they are not the one who scrap the vessels. The vessel will have a second lifetime at the, uh, with another ship owner who will uh, operate the vessel for a longer period. They will be more comfortable with another vessel and then they will uh, scrap the vessel. So to my experience, I spent uh, uh, 18 years at uh, Louis Dreyfus, which is the first class ship owner, and I never experienced the scrapping of a vessel. We dispose the vessel, we sell the vessel to someone else who will operate and then scrap the vessel afterwards. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, now I have another question because, you know, uh, currently I have an assignment for school. Uh, so we, we, it's like an exercise. We, have a ship, we are a ship owner. We want to invest in a fleet of different types of vessels. And we need to calculate the return on investment by taking into account the net present value, IRR, etc. Uh, and I thought it was quite interesting to talk about it during the, the this episode. Is it something in real life? You take into account and oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. So uh, that's a magic formula of Excel. So it's not the good place to to make a, a, a lesson uh, on, <laughs> on, 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 on this for sure. However, that is clearly uh, what uh, what ship owners do uh, every day is assess the, the quality of a project towards the the ERR indeed. Uh, in French, it's théorie taux de rendement interne, and um, so this is very 
basic and simple, I would say. Um, it's it, it's a table where you put the amount that you uh, take in your pocket and put on the table in, on, on this um, uh, on this project. So let's say you you have uh, uh, one million to put uh, on the on the table. Then after you go to meet a, 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 a banker to whom you explain your project, and he will lend you, let's say, uh, uh, four million. And then you have this five million with which you have to acquire the vessel, to uh, operate the vessel, to put uh, all the operations cost, all the OPEX cost, the crew, the insurance, yeah. uh, for sure, the, the, the fuel and so on. And then expect a return uh, over the years uh, by operating the vessel on the market. So you have in your table all the revenues, all the charges, the cash flow, positive. When you calculate your IRR, you'd say, I put 1 million on the table. Every year I will recover after reimbursing the loan uh, to, the, to, the, to the bank. I will make, let's say, 100K uh, per year. And then you're, over the lifetime of the vessels, you have the cash flows. And then you take your magic formula for the IRR, mm. and then he will the formula will tell you what will be the performance mm. of your equity over the lifetime of the project. So every time it depends on, on the risk that the ship owner wants to take. Or not. If uh, your one million has been remunerated let's say by 10 percent over the lifetime of the project that's quite good but if you go in a very difficult area on a very uh, high risky uh, business and so on then the ship owner will require from this project a higher uh, revenue if you go on the very smooth business uh, less risky uh, which is not uh, often the case in the in the shipping industry. Then the ship owner will accept to have a lower um, uh, uh, rentability of this uh, of this equity. So the RR is clearly the best way to see if the money you are ready to put on the table will be uh, well invested or not. Okay. Now when now when you talk about the NPV, the NPV is usually used to compare two projects to see what is the value of the project. So let's say you have two, two type of vessels you want to invest uh, in and you hesitate, then you will do the, 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 the NPD, NPV of this project with the cash flows. And then at the end, you will see which one of the two uh, uh, project has the higher NPV. Okay. Well, and they will help you to decide. Okay. So when you take into account the future operational uh, cash flow, uh, do you take into account the inflation on all the, um, the I cost? I forgot to mention, sorry, I forgot to mention that these cash flow are discounted. Uh, okay. So you have many uh, ways to discount the, 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 the cash flows. Uh, the, the, the best and the sharpest way is the weighted average cost of capital, the WAC, which is always very difficult to calculate. Um, because it depends on uh, a lot of things, the, the, the own uh, cost of capital of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the ship owner plus the, uh, the average risk of the underlying uh, business and so on. And yes, indeed, you discount this cash flow and then you calculate the IRR with this discounted cash flow. And in your cost table, for sure, you can escalate uh, all the OPEX uh, especially in uh, these days, uh, you have to put some inflation over the crew, over the insurance, over the uh, the bunkering, over many uh, mm. many aspects of the of the business plan. Quite interesting. So I think you answer very well to the question I wanted to ask you anyway, which is like, what do we have some formulas technique to assess the financial performance and profitability of owning a vessel? So I think we we cover this topic. I can I can easily share with you if you want an example. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will send you that because I have many examples in my laptop for sure, as you can imagine. Okay, for sure. <laughs> nice. Um, can you uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about your experience uh, when you worked with ship uh, in a ship owner company? I think it was Louis Dreyfus. Um, your mission on oh everything is related to what we talk. Yeah. Uh, so. When you are financiers, uh, it's uh, difficult to exit uh, from uh, from this. Uh, you have some bridges uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the commercial side, I would say, but much more than to the uh, operational side. So I have 
a, a financial background in my uh, in my studies, and, and, and then after um, I, I start as a trainee at Woodruffus in Singapore on the uh, logistics and transshipment uh, business, which was quite exci exact exciting. Um, and then after I had several positions within the group. Um, as the chairman uh, told me uh, 15 years ago b before starting a, a long term contract with uh, with LDA when you put your finger in shipping you cannot exit afterwards which is true uh -huh. um, it, it, as as i told you earlier you need very dedicated and very specialized people in this, in this industry so when you are a shipping man uh, you remain shipping uh, for the whole time uh, of your life um, uh, and then uh, within risk refus uh, I had several positions, so cost control as a trainee in the transshipment business, and then after uh, I was uh, at the accounting department, uh, not very funny, but very interesting to look at what was the impact of the new accounting rules, IFRS, mm. uh, for ship owners. And then after I moved to the ferry uh, activity we had uh, between France and the UK on the ch on the channel, it was very exciting. It was um, a startup mood uh, with a very young team. And then after I moved to um, to uh, LDA uh, uh, as the, the the CFO, the um, the deputy CFO, uh, and then I remained at this position for 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 a long time, becoming CFO in 2016. So uh, in, in, in all this, uh, uh, this uh, period at, at LGA, I had a, a position which was more corporate to look at internal uh, financing uh, duties, but also which was much more exciting on the operational side, on the project side, where I was helping all the operational guy, commercial guy, to set up business plan to help them to assess what would be the feasibility of each project and for sure, then after on the financing side, uh, I had the opportunity to um, to finance uh, up to uh, thirty vessels or something like that. And there are very different scheme. W one scheme uh, we haven't talking about is uh, the French tax lease, which is a, a specific uh, financing for French ship owners, which is very efficient, but but very complex uh, for sure. And yeah, it's always been around the. Uh, financing uh, and the feasibility of a project uh, in the shipping industry. So, yeah, this is a small world. You have uh, some uh, events around the world uh, dedicated to ship finance. I would not say that we all know uh, each other, uh, but we always see the same faces uh, in, in this uh, in this kind of event. Uh, so it's a very small world and very exciting one. Well, wow. yeah, you cover a wide aspect of the financial uh, space in the industry. <laughs> in, yeah, indeed, indeed, absolutely. Nice. So uh, it, it's a good uh, transition to switch on the other topic, which is more about career, because, you know, people who listen to this podcast, most of them are quite young people, but who have every ages as, uh, anyway. But most of them want to know uh, more about the what kind of position they can expect in the finance financial space, what is the typical first position? I would say that uh, there are two ways to, uh, to, uh, to enter this, uh, uh, this business. I don't like this word, but <laughs> anyhow. Um, two good ways, I would say. Uh, it's very important when you work in this, uh, in this space to understand exactly, like in many other uh, business for sure, but to understand what does expect the people you are talking to. So basically, you have two sides, the ship owner side and the lending side. If you have the opportunity to, uh, uh, to get a good view of these two sides, that's a huge uh, advantage. So either you start as a ship owners and then you understand all the needs of the ship owners, all the constraints of the ship owners, all the reflect, uh, the reflex of the ship owner, how they assess the project, how they assess the situation, how they assess the, uh, the, the the operation, the assets, and so on. And then after, you will have um, a, a very good uh, understanding of the of the ship owner, which will be very useful if you go to the, the other side, on the lending side, on the investing side. They will these guys will be very happy to integrate someone who knows perfectly all the uh, the, the aspects of the ship owning. My belief is that the best um, uh, the, the best move from ship owning to lending investing, or you can do the other opposite, the opposite, 
then you start uh, uh, within an investor, and then you understand all the constraints, the reflex, the needs of an investor, how they do assess a project, how they do assess a ship owner, how they do assess the, the security. And then after you go to a ship owners and you will understand uh, more uh, what to expect from a, a, an investors. In that case, you have less chances because uh, it will be very difficult to find a ship owner who will feed you with so many uh, investment and projects. Usually in, uh, in the shipping space, you have for sure very big companies, but there are not so many, but you have a lot of small companies who mm. have 5, 10, 20, 30 vessels. And then in that case, you will finance in a good period, you will finance one, two, three vessels per year, which is not that big. If you work at a CMS, GM, MSC, and so on, then you will have a huge book to finance, and it will be very interesting because you will deal with uh, investors, equity, private debt, banks, and so on and so on. Mm. Uh, within the bank uh, uh, financing, you will have the uh, export credit agency also uh, financing, which is uh, very different. And, um, so uh, I would say the best move is perfectly understand the, 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 the business by working with the ship owner for a while. Um, and then after, if you want to remain as I did in the, in the, in the ship financing, then you move either to an investor or to an advisory boutique. We are not so many uh, doing our job, um, uh, this job uh, around the world. The specificity of uh, Eurofin uh, is that we are one of the few independent advisory boutiques. You have many advisors which are part of a broker. Uh, the, the main uh, that, uh, that we all know, Clarkson's, yeah. Fianlay's, uh, Pareto, BRS, and so on, they all open a, a financing desk and which, which, uh, which is fed by the deal flow of the broker. Uh, they do a very good job, but they are not fully independent as we are at, uh, at Eurofin. Um, so yeah, you have many possibilities, but perfectly the, the best way to understand uh, this business is to go uh, first in a ship owning uh, company. Okay. So do we, do we need some uh, specific uh, um, studies like, or uh, you can start from a basic position and then learn everything on the field? Everything is possible. Um, uh, the, the, the specificity of, uh, of, the, of ship owners, for sure, is all the, the, the sailors. Uh, if I take the example I know well with Louis Dreyfus, most of the middle management was former seafarers, okay. uh, officers. So they spent 10, 15, 20 years on board. And then after they, they go on shore and they run a business, they run a, a business line or, or, or something like that. So these guys are, are, are very uh, interesting because they had a very different life from yours life before. They were sailing, they know perfectly all the vessels. They have a lot of contacts everywhere and so on. But uh, you know perfectly well that the, the best way to, uh, to, to be hired by a ship owner is to, uh, to have uh, your kind of studies uh, in France at uh, the French Marine Merchant uh, School. Yeah. Uh, but on more corporate side, um, on the financing note, you don't have any dedicated uh, uh, school or something like that. Maybe you have some masters which are dedicated to ship finance, but I don't think so, at least not in France. Uh, on the legal side, the the, 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 the the maritime law is a bit different, so they have some uh, dedicated uh, program dedic uh, dedicated to uh, to shipping law, but otherwise on the financing side, uh, no, it's more uh, general. Okay, quite interesting. And now we have a last question to ask you. Do you have any anecdotes to share, uh, like regarding your journey as in finance? Or... Ah, I'm <laughs> hesitating a lot. I, I, will share, I, I will share my worst experience. I will okay. share my race experience and it will explain how exciting it is. Okay. Uh, it was in my, uh, in my uh, former company at, at, uh, at Louis Dreyfus. Um, the operational team targeted two vessels, two resales vessels, which means that a shipyard in China uh, was about to deliver two vessels, but the ship owner who ordered the vessel was not there anymore. So they had the shipyard has these two vessels on his arm. Okay. 
uh, on his own and uh, wanted to uh, to get uh, rid of them. So they offered a very good price, and uh, we 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 identified this vessel and uh, and decided to acquire them. So they went to me. The the the, the CEO went to me, told me, Mozag, you have ten days to 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 find the financing. At that time. At that time, I will not make any uh, name dropping, but at that time, the Chinese lessors was more and more aggressive, providing amazing uh, financing conditions very quickly and so on. So it was Christmas period. Uh, I spent the whole uh, Christmas holidays uh, around my uh, my phone and uh, with the meetings and visio and so on with this uh, lessor. It was very difficult to communicate. Uh, because uh, it was in a, they were in, a, in China at that time, and they didn't perform twice. Twice we had to go very quickly. The first time uh, on my own to uh, to Shanghai to try to save the deal. The other one I bring the CEO with me. Uh, we tried to uh, to solve the solution, and twice they they failed to uh, to uh, to deliver the financing. So it was very very stressful, as you can no. imagine. And we finally uh, went to a private uh, equity uh, investors who found us a solution very quickly. But it was very, very stressful. And on the other side, a few, few years after, very exciting. So wow. it's, uh, it's, always, it's, a, it's a very dynamic uh, uh, business. Uh, you meet a lot of people. Um, the ship owning uh, side is very interesting. And on the other side, on the uh, investing and uh, lending side, uh, you can uh, uh, you can travel a lot uh, from uh, from uh, Europe to Asia and meet uh, very different people. But that was my worst experience. And, uh, and <laughs> I really, I learned a lot through this experience oh, that as long as you don't have the money on your bank account, nothing is done. Yes. Wow. Okay, great. Thank you for this uh, good anecdote. Uh, thank you for this episode. Uh, I'm quite happy uh, to be honest with you because we cover a wide panel of topics uh, within uh, one hour. So it's quite good. Perfect. Uh, thank you for that. I wish you all the best. Me too. Uh, and and, and uh, once again, bravo for your initiative, which is very, uh, very good. And uh, I'm very glad to see that uh, the youngest generation, because you are much younger than me, <laughs> used to be. I used to be young a few years ago in this industry, but uh, it's even uh, very good to see that uh, it's uh, attracting uh, some uh, new uh, new generation, and uh, very happy to share some more experience or tips on, on this uh, on this exciting uh, business. Thank you, Gonzague. I will, I wish you a very good day. Bye bye. Thank you for listening and watching this episode. We are looking forward to bring you more insights from maritime professionals, experts, and students. Do not hesitate to follow the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support means a lot to us and helps us to bring you more content.